हरिओ द लास्ट ऑफ द सीरीज आई हैड प्रोमिस दैट वी विल गो थ्रू द स्टेप बाय स्टेप प्रोसेस इन ऑर्डर टू प्रिपेयर वन सेल्फ सो दैट वी कुड ग्लाइड इन टू दैट स्टेट ऑफ बीइंग एंड अबाइड दैट निधिध्यासन टू हैपन what are the steps that are required so in understanding the steps first and foremost a commitment in life to change every single action to the attitude of karma yoga very essential and having committed to it it raises our internal equipment its alertness because every moment has to be consciously lived mindfully lived that is the first requirement then the second requirement is to strengthen our mind our internal equipment with the upasana so that our mind can come to that single pointedness that concentrated mind becomes an accessible point not that i have to struggle for it on the seat of meditation but it is already something that i have accomplished that is the second step now once these two steps have been taken in very sincerely and practiced very very judiciously then comes the moment wherein we prep for being able to abide in that preparation many take these steps and call this in itself as meditation these are not meditation i want to reemphasize that for absolute clarity they cannot be called as meditation but they can be called as preparatory steps required so that my mind can be available for that moment so what are these steps in the third step karma upasana then the third step in the third step there are several uh, subsets the first pick a particular time wherein you know for yourself that this time is consistently dedicated for this practice and nothing else changes me from that that consistency can be guaranteed pick that time preferably we say that it has to be early in the morning earlier than when all activities start buzzing in before that that you freshen up take a shower clean up the altar area sit down light a lamp just to create the ambiance and with all shraddha in your heart invoke the blessings of that jagadishwara in the form of your ishta devata your guru maharaj the blessings of shruti mata and then begin with first the posture this posture and accomplishing the posture to be in one form throughout the process so that i don't need to move or constantly keep you know fidgeting around usually what is suggested is 
प्लीज सिट इन सुखासन इफ यू आर अ रेगुलर प्रैक्टिशनर ऑफ योगासनास देन यू मे ट्राई यूजिंग पोस्चर्स लाइक पद्मासन अर्ध पद्मासन सो यू कैन बट इफ यू आर नॉट इन टू इट आई वुड इन सजेस्ट इट इन द पोस्टर बींग फर्म द सेंटर ऑफ ग्रेविटी विच इज एट द नाभि the head the neck and the back should be aligned straight and the pressure of your body the center of gravity should not be on any other aspect of the body the lower body otherwise you will have the tingling feeling as though the ants are moving that can be a reality if i have taken into consideration the posture Now, after the posture has been ascertained, I have put my hands and legs in that posture, where the head, neck, and the back are in straight line. Shoulders are relaxed, hands interlocked, placed in the lap. Gently close your eyes so that the outside ambiance does not distract me. Withdraw one by one. our mind trying to engage through different sense organs from those sense organs with raw this mind okay this is pretty much the first step the second step between the physical tangible world and the intangible when i say intangible you can alone feel it your thoughts emotions feelings no one else can it is inside you it's not tangible beyond that so there is a connecting bridge and that connecting bridge is called prana prana is not some uh, breathing exercise and i don't want to turn it into a layman's terms in translation because in translation there is so much lost i would still use the word prana prana is that which vitalizes with the energy rightfully sourced and rightfully channelized through the system and in order to regulate it there are some exercises these exercises are called pranayama the control and regulation of our breathing what happens when i control and regulate this breathing it brings an amount of immense amount of peace it brings the mind which is constantly gushing out with several layers of thoughts it gets very easily pulled out of that gushing aspect and it gives a sense of stability from within after that pranayama is done you find that the mind is now be more at peace than what it was before practicing pranayama but still it doesn't promise complete cessation of thoughts and the flow of thoughts which we don't want it to happen then it would be called as sleep then what do we do next next we introduce a self disciplined thought which is called a mantra and we repeat that self disciplined thought and that repetition process of this mantra is called japa but it has to be done in synchronization with inhalation and exhalation so you inhale consciously and as you are exhaling i would say a good amount of it would be 108 times supposing your ishta devata is bhagwan shiva and bhagwan shiva's ishta deva mantra it would be om namah shivaya the uniqueness of this om namah shivaya is it gets mentioned in the namaka prashna 
meaning it is revealed within the vedic literature so it is a veda mantra so supposing that is your mantra so sit sit straight close your eyes put your hands in your lap and then begin because it is going to be 108 i would also suggest if you can have a japa mala so that the count is regulated so you sit down breathe in breathe in only through your nostrils so breathe in as you are breathing out om namah shivaya again breathe in om namah shivaya the point here is there is no rush or there should not be any rush to finish this 108 why 108 because there are total of 108 chakras in our body of which the main ones we talk about from muladhara to sushumna uh, sorry through sushumna to the sahasrara the main ones which are on the vertebrae the total of 108 by chanting it regularly each one of these chakra is re-coordinated realigned so that maximum positive energy is rushing through this entire system the system of body mind and intellect once that pranayama is done in synchronization with the japa the mind which constantly keeps entertaining several amounts of thoughts several layers of thoughts it need not be fought with you don't need to fight with it but instead when you have introduced this particular thought called mantra and you are repeating it for 108 times during that particular 108 times what is happening mind can entertain one thought per given moment and when thought that one thought is constantly connected with breathing and your japa mala your posture is straight all the organs of perception action prana mana buddhi everything is aligned into that one act that it cannot go here and there the point being that we need to bring that focal point which should have been accomplished if you have done our upasana in a proper meticulous judicious manner on a daily basis this should have been easier this way we accomplish getting to that focal point so with the pranayama a sense of stability with the japa process the focal point and the concentrated mind is brought in it is now charged up with a lot of positive energy now this mind can be taken into the field of external to accomplish various responsibilities with the attitude of karma yoga or we bring that mind and turn it within to observe the observer to be the observer who is observing all of these motions this is called being a sakshi many times we falter here and it takes several dedicated hours to get to the point wherein i can stay as sakshi without getting attached without getting uh, carried away by my thoughts feelings emotions or uh, confusions doubts and ideas the, there is an intermediary step that intermediary step is you can contemplate on having a dialogue with your visualization with your ishta devata like how you imagine talking to your spouse your friend your children you know wish if they were there with me i would have spoken to them like this this is what i would have done you visualize it something similar much deeper connecting much deeper 
when we have this dialogue, what is happening here? The mind which is constantly multi-focused is brought in to a state of stability, then to a focal point through the chanting, one thought repetition, then one themed repetition. The mind settles into a groove. The intellect has been doing its manana. Therefore, on the seat of meditation, there is no further uh, clamoring of doubts that should have been already taken care of. Now, once this mind is prepped with these steps, over a period of time when this is practiced, you reach to a point wherein the mind is awake, very important. Obviously, if you say that I have to reach to a state of no mindness, then you don't need to do any of this practice. You can just go straight sleep. Sleep is no mindness. So we are not aiming for no mind state. We are aiming for an awakeful mind, alert mind, and a vigilant mind. Being an observer, a witness, witness of any movement. Then what happens? There is a conscious silence experienced. In that conscious silence, when you try observing what is the source of this conscious silence, because the mind has become very still. So when you are standing in front of a mirror, what happens? You see a reflection of you in the mirror. Though you are seeing the reflection of yourself in the mirror, the pragna, the understanding that is happening is that it is not my reflection, but through that I am seeing myself. So, in the state of deeper observation or witnesshood, when I, when my mind has become really quiet, I see that that which is identifying with all these layers is actually a reflection. The source is reflecting through them and I am assuming I am the reflection. What is the understanding that happens? Oh my goodness, I am not this reflection, I am the source. Once this understanding happens, once this knowing happens, abidance is the practice of this Nididhyasana. And that should be practiced continuously, rigorously, meticulously to a point wherein I start with closed eyes on the seat of uh, meditation, but to extend it to that point wherein I can practice this even with my eyes open, even with my sense organs open to the outside world, I still retain that awarefulness as my true nature. That doesn't get deviated or shaken up. This abidance is called liberation while being in this system of samsara. I hope I have given you step by step. We can bring the water, but it is only that that who is thirsty will drink and take it sincerely. I hope and pray that that Ishtadaiva, that Guru Maharaj and the Shruti Mata bless each one of us seekers so profusely that we we make use of this life in the most efficient manner. Because if I am abiding in that nature which is constantly bubbling forth with joy and happiness, I become the source of happiness for everybody around. That would be the greatest seva of that Narayana in these forms. So, 
hopefully we get to that point in this life. We'll continue because there are several nuances that have to be rightly understood, correctly understood. So that we will continue tomorrow in the next of this series. Adios.